Living Word and Worship Ministries here tonight for 715 Wednesday Night Bible Study. We are going to get into the Word tonight and we are going to talk about commitment on tonight. Commitment and being submitted. And uh, we are going to talk with those um, with those topics um, in regards to Ruth and her life and we're going to point out those things in there and so much more on tonight so again um, hey if you have your Bible let's get your Bible out get a notepad so you can write down some notes um, and we're going to get into the word but before we start I want to pray and then we will um, go ahead and, and get with it on tonight father god lord we just thank you for this evening god we bless your name we thank you for each and every person that is joining us on tonight we thank you for the fellowship of friends and family oh god we thank you for our mentors oh god we thank you for our pastors oh god we lift up these people oh god we thank you for our leaders on tonight we lift up even the government oh god and the leaders in the government oh god those that are making decisions oh god lord about our life god we keep them up in prayer oh god lord help us to continue to submit and humble ourselves oh god under the people that you have placed upon us oh god lord i thank you oh god for the voice of many people oh god lord and i just pray oh god lord that your will be done in the government in our house in our church house on our job oh god in our relationships oh god let your will be done and have your way god god we worship you on tonight and we give you all the glory all the praise help us to stay humble help us to stay committed help us to stay focused help us to stay submitted under the authority that you have placed oh god in this season of our life in this time oh god and in this place we adore you god we magnify you and we give you all the praise in jesus christ's name amen and amen man i'm telling you i am so excited and i've been just waiting for this week to come because i couldn't wait god has been giving me you know some wisdom and just going up over my life and just showing me you know areas of growth and places where i needed growth and places of improvement and god was just showing me you know and then he was giving me ruth and and you know you ruth is a story that a, a lot of people are familiar with and we respect this story but we also respect her and then we also know it as boaz and a lot of people look at this story as oh man you know he, he that finds the wife finds the good thing and then we then we go back to ruth and like oh man she got her boaz and so we always think about boaz and ruth but tonight i want to talk about commitment because before she received boaz right she was committed and she was submitted to somebody before she even receive the blessing and the victory I say not just the blessing but the victory there is a blessing in the victory that God has for you and that is all in the purpose that is lined out in the process that God has you in so tonight we're gonna to be talking about commitment 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 is the state and quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity okay so it's the state or quality of being okay dedicated to a cause or activity engagement or obligation both of those words are big engagement and obligation that means that it requires action it requires you to move and so commitment commitment is about trusting in God the pledge that we make to God is in response to the many promises that he has made to us but in order to truly commit to him we have to believe that he will deliver on his promises how many y'all know that we don't just commit unless we really know and we really believe in something right there has to be some level of trust and that's why i like what we're talking about on tonight and how we're going to link it up to ruth in here in a little bit so psalms 37 5 in your bible it says commitment commit your way to the lord trust in him and he will do this i love that end of that scripture where it says trust in him and who he will do this so i want y'all to remember tonight look if you don't get nothing else trust in god because he will do this 
whatever situation that you are coming across, whatever has came to your doorstep, trust God. He will do this. So it we also requires us to love. Commitment is about trusting God, which we said first. Second, it requires us to love. Remember in the in the definition of commitment, there's engagement, there's an obligation, there is a place of dedication that requires us to respond and to move. So it requires us to love. That big word that can be dangerous but also satisfying at the same time. Generally speaking, the more we love someone, the more committed we tend to be. Our openness to committing to God is encouraged by the deep love that we have for him. The level and the depth of our love, right, shows our commitment. The more we love someone, the more we are committed and we tend to be with them and we tend them. So we tend to the things that are required because of the depth of our love, because of our trust, because of our uh, relationship. First Kings 6, 61, it says, and may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God. It doesn't say partial, it doesn't say half. It says fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commandments as at this time. How many of y'all know that it's better to obey than to sacrifice? God would rather us obey his word than keep trying to do our own thing and mess up and come back and be like, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I understand, you know, that yes, we might be sorry, but if we continue to do it, are we really sorry? Are we really committed? Are we fully committed to obey his word? Because obedience, if you think about it, obedience is like a wheel in the hands of God where he can turn it, right? into whichever direction that means into greatness because that's what he's going to do he said greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world so when we obey that is power in god's hand to turn our situation into something great to turn that into victory it reminds me of a song um Um, He turned my morning into dancing. Um, And that's out of Psalms 30. I think it's verse 11. Psalms 30 verse 11 when you get a chance to go in there. God turns our morning into dancing. And and it talks about rejoicing and our sickness into, you know, joy and just different things. He's turning different things in our life, you know, for the better. So when we obey God and his word. Remember, it's like a wheel in his hands and he's able to turn it into greatness. So Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. God is requiring all of you tonight. He's requiring all of us tonight. I believe in relationships. In order to have healthy relationships, he requires our participation. He he requires our engagement, our commitment. He wants us to commit. That means that he wants our full attention. Trust me, if we don't, if God don't have our attention, we are going to have to deal with situations and circumstances that come our way, tests and trials to get our attention because it is easy to get distracted. The world has so many different things to catch our eye and quickly we can be distracted. So first, commitment, it's about trusting God. Second, it requires us to love. Number three, it means making sacrifices. Sometimes saying yes to God means that we have to say no. I want everybody to repeat after me. No. No. Okay, say it again. No. 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 (laughs) Okay. Sometimes saying yes to God means that we have to say no to a lot of other things. 
which appeals to us. So the things that we like, we can't always receive them, say yes to them, or go with them. People can make the mistake of thinking that our faith, right, restricts our freedom when it actually fosters it. Jesus' sacrifice frees us to pursue a relationship with God. In Matthew chapter 16, 24 through 25, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. And as we see that a lot of things in the world can get our focus off of what God wants us to focus on because they live their life of trying to save their lives and trying to do everything that they can to live longer and to have life all the time. But God says in his word here in Matthew to save your life, you must lose it. That means that we have to make necessary sacrifices to gain life. Matthew chapter 10, 37 says, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me. Now this is a shocker in this scripture. I don't know if you've heard this before, but we tend to put a lot of restraint, a lot of heaviness, a lot of expectation, a lot of obligation on our children, on our parents, on our siblings. We put a lot of pressure on them to be more than what they probably should be doing. And here in this scripture, it says anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or their daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That means even the closest people that are closer to you. Listen, if we're putting more attention, more time, more effort, more focus upon, on them, then we're losing the sight of what really the attention that God wants us to place on him. And we're losing that focus that he desires, that he wants, that love, that affection, that affirmation. He wants everything of us. Remember, we, we read in that scripture, he wants our heart. He wants our focus. He wants our love. He wants our mind. He wants our ears, our tongue, our eyes. He wants everything. And if you think about it, it's just like a steering wheel or a, I would say a rudder on a boat. If we give God that small piece, and sometimes we think that, you know, these areas in our life are, are just so big, but yet sometimes they can be just so small. And if we give up one thing at a time to God, we will be surprised on what God would do with the little that we give him. Number four. I believe we're on number four. Yes, number four, doing certain things on a regular basement. We are talking about commitment. So number four, doing certain things on a regular basis. We can recognize how dedicated someone is to another person or thing by how much prominence they give them in their lives, like we just read in Matthew 10, 37. Our commitment to God can be fleeting it has to be sustained. So it can't be fleeting. It has to be sustained. In other words, lifelong. Our deeds are an essential way of demonstrating our dedication to him. So God wants us to be dedicated to him. He wants prominence in our life. He wants to be first in every area of our life. Just think about our relationships if we put God first. Think about our life if we put the, the, the goals we want and we establish. The standards that we live by. 
Just think about our spouses and the relationships that we want. Even as children, those that are watching and the youth that are watching, think about your relationships, you know, and how commitment makes a big deal. But just also think that how commitment even to our relationships and to our family and to our jobs, right? It takes up a lot of time. It takes up, there's a lot of pressure there to perform, to respond, to be dedicated. But God is saying, listen, I'm the one that needs to come first. If God is placed first in our life, then everything else will follow suit. And we will be able to give the right balance to our family, the right balance to our job, the right balance to our relationships. So number five of commitment, it involves giving everything we have. Everybody say everything. everything. All right. So it involves giving everything we have. Any relationship involves commitment. When we commit to God, we have a truly surrendered life. We truly surrender when we commit to God. This doesn't just involve giving up our time or and turning away from temptation. It also means actively submitting ourselves to him. In verse in chapter Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, 19 through 20, it says, Do you not know that your bodies are a temple? of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have received from God you are not your own you are bought at a price therefore honor God with your bodies so God wants everything that we have he wants our money he wants our time he wants our love he wants our relationships he wants our family he wants our focus and so tonight we're talking about commitment because the greatest thing about commitment is that it leads us into a deeper relationship whether it be in our in our with our spouse if you're married whether it be with friendship whether it be um, on our job we talked about it hey commitment takes time and when we are committed to these different aspects of our life different areas right we are able to bring depth to the situation that means you'll have a level of trust you'll have a level of belief you'll have a level of submission under authority and you'll be able to have iron sharpens iron all of that is part of being a part of the community being a part of the body of Christ where God wants to continuously flow through the body how many of y'all know that when the foot tries to be the hand it's not gonna work if the hand tries to be the nose it's not gonna work because God did not design the foot to be the hand or the hand to be the foot but he designed each and every one of us purposefully right designed specifically for the assignments in the area that you are currently in right now despise not small beginnings despise despise not the relationships that you have because you're either going to learn from them or you're going to gain from them yeah. but i'm telling you right now god worketh everything to his purpose to yeah. his plan all things work out for the good of those that love the lord and that are called according to his purpose god has a purpose for you god has a purpose for me and i'm gonna tell you right now ruth is an awesome example even though there was a list that i had wrote down oh my god when i was thinking about commitment right god has showed me all the different people in the bible but some that i love after reading the stories and knowing the stories over years of reading and studying right if you think about it jacob he was submitted under his uncle regardless of how that story came up but there was 20 years of submission that he did he submitted under that authority ruth was submitted under naomi and boaz esther was submitted under mordecai and king right 
Daniel, he was submitted under the king and he was submitted to God. All of these were submitted to God, but there were, there's, there were specific people in their life that God had them to submit under. And because of their submission, God took them to another level. God stirred that wheel, right? He turned that wheel into greatness. No matter how it started, no matter where it started, God turned the wheel. It doesn't matter where you start but it is it does matter where you finish it matters to God how you go through the process in the situations in the storms of your life whether it be a um whether you're in a high day or a low day or a good day or a bad day it matters how you yes. proceed it yes. matters who goes along with you samuel was submitted hannah was submitted timothy was submitted joseph was submitted and they were all committed to the call that god had called them to be and some of them honestly wasn't even in their purpose until after they submitted themselves. Amen. So I'm telling you right now, maybe you don't know where you're supposed to be. Maybe you need more clarity. Hey, I encourage you on tonight. If there's somebody that's been in your life and they're speaking into your life, or you got pastors, or you got a mother or auntie or somebody special that has been there for you, or that is, is, is um, I would say, humble, to, to walk along this journey with you in, in this season of your life, I submit to you that you submit to them and that you come up under that covering Amen. and allow God to bring a blessing of covering, of protection, of provision, and allow him to just come up in that area, in that atmosphere. Allow him to open up your eyes to limitless ideas, goals, visions. He will open up your eyes when you submit, when you commit yourself. I think one of the biggest areas that I have dealt with, um, besides different relationships is being married because how many y'all know you're with that spouse all the time whether you work or not it doesn't matter but you're always with them so that means you're always accountable to them whether you're doing good or you're bad you're accountable you have somebody that's going to talk back and always give feedback whether you like it or not i have had we all have to find ourselves to submit under those natural authorities because god is the one that placed them in your life and how many of y'all know that we might not have been looking for them or we might have been undecisive, but God knows what he's doing. And yeah. some of us introverts needed an extrovert to get us out of that isolation, yeah. out of that depression, out of ourself to be able to see that there's a bigger possibilities, bigger opportunities for God to use us and to come in our life and just be great, to be amazing. He wants us to see him in so many areas of our life. And sometimes it's, and most of the time, it really starts when we submit under the authority of somebody. We should first though, submit under God because God will direct our path. But let's go to Ruth here as we are talking about commitment. I want to go into Ruth and I want to talk about what happened. And I want to read chapter 3, 1 through 11, because I want to start in the back because this is where God took Ruth. And then I want to scale quickly to the front of the story. A lot of us know the beginning of the story, but I want to look at the end because the ending is where God took Ruth. So if you can turn with me, I'm reading out of the New King James Version to Ruth chapter 3, and we're going to start in verse 1. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young woman you were with, is he not our relative? In fact, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Because this, at this time, there was harvest time going on. It says, verse 3, Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished 
eating and drinking. This is Ruth, or I'm sorry, this is Naomi speaking to Ruth. Verse four, then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in and uncover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what you should do. Verse five, and she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. I hope you're following me with so far. Verse six, so she went down to the threshing floor and did according to all that her mother-in-law instructed her. And after Boaz had eaten and drunk and he and his heart was cheerful, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. And she came softly, uncovered his feet and laid down. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled and turned himself there. A woman was lying at his feet and he said, who are you? In verse, and this is verse nine. So she answered, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative. Number 10, it says, then he said, blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning. Are y'all, are y'all following me here? In that you did not go after young men whether poor or rich. And now my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. In some versions, it says a, no, a woman of noble characters. And I love this part of Ruth because it's saying, listen, my, my comment here that I wrote down was, Follow the plan. Just follow the plan. Sometimes we have too many questions and sometimes we want to know everything right now. But again, that's the opposite of faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not even seen. And God does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, right? So that means we can't even, we don't even have the capacity to imagine everything that God wants to do for us right now. That's why we have his word. That's why we have, he puts people in our life to encourage us. But God wants our full attention here in this story right here. Because of Ruth follow, take, making the decision to follow Naomi, right? God entrusted her under Naomi, entrusted Naomi with Ruth. So there was a relationship that went back and forth. It wasn't just for Ruth, but it was also from Naomi. So I want you to understand that this is a plan that, that was followed with no question, but with direction. Naomi gave Ruth direction on what to do, how to do it, to the washing of herself and anointing herself, to present herself acceptable unto their lordship, which is Boaz. So at this time, Naomi is not thinking about herself. It's all about Ruth and how the best way of, present, of preparing Ruth for somebody else to live her life, to move forward in her life, that there is still life after death. And here in this story, it shows the, um, when it goes into uh, verse eight, it talks about at midnight, right? Mm -hmm. That the man was startled and turned himself in and the woman was lying at his feet. And this is not an area where it's crazy or looks weird, but this was a custom that they did. And they did this to tell that, tell the Lord who they're serving that they are their kinsman redeemer. This was a custom where they honored the people that they served. And they, by going to the end of their feet, it's like us and like Jesus where he knelt down before the Father and he humbled himself. So even in here, it shows a great picture of Ruth humbling herself, acknowledging Boaz in letting him know because of this is what I'm doing. I want you to know Boaz, this is Ruth, right? I want you to know that you are my kinsman redeemer. That means you, you are my authority. I submit myself unto you. And I'm telling you, if we can just submit and commit ourselves unto the Lord, he will direct our path.
And so, in the, in the, so going back to the beginning now of Ruth, okay, in that time where Naomi and Ruth meet, okay, this was after Naomi and her husband, they were in the time of the judges and the famine. And it was dark times right now because of the cycles of the Israelites in sin, crying out for deliverance. They went through cycles of sinning, crying out, sinning, crying out, being delivered. They went through these cycles and they were dark times. And God brought judges to bring deliverance for his people in these times. So they were being punished and rescued over and over. So the Israelites had a hard time submitting and following through. So they were in cycles. If we do not learn how to commit our ways unto the Lord and to submit under the authority that God has given us in our life, and I mentioned a bunch of different authority figures that might be in your life, whether it be the boss on your job, whether it be God, whether it be the family member, whether it be your pastor, you know, any your friendship and your relationships, right? God has placed certain people in your life for a reason, and we need to understand the importance of them in our lives. How many of y'all can agree that if we do not if we find ourselves going in cycles of issues and situations and circumstances and tests and trials and we go through these cycles, you know, of, you know, being free and then and then crying out kind of like the Israelites and then being delivered and we just go through these cycles is because somewhere we are not submitting fully under the authority that God has given us. Jeremiah 2 13 it says my people have committed two sins they have forsaken me the spring of living water and have dug their own cisterns broken cisterns that cannot hold water this was the appetite of our beloved Israelites mm -hmm. their appetite was for everything else mm -hmm. and not of God everything else but God until they were in desperation because of the consequences of separation. That's what sin does. That's what happens when we fall away from our first love, from the creator, our creator. We begin to go through the pain of separation and we feel that, you know, we wonder why we don't feel God or we don't hear God. It's not that he's left you, he's with you, but because of the sin in our life, because of our unsubmitted selfish ways, doing our own thing, having our own agenda, wanting to be in control of our lives. We will put ourselves into many cycles and we will, instead of submitting our ways and our life to God, we're submitting unto the ways and the life of the world. And the world is carrying us to and fro. Whichever way doctrine comes and whichever way anybody is speaking or directing we are shifting and rolling and going with the flow so let's go back to the story of Ruth Naomi and her husband they had two sons they moved from Bethlehem into the area of Moab Naomi's husband first died here comes the storm her boys married two Moabite women after her husband died and so now her sons are married. Then 10 years being there in Moab, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing and kind of going through here. After 10 years, right, of being there, of marriage and being in Moab, all the men are gone now because then she loses her sons, not just her husband, but she loses her two sons. And she is left with Ruth and Orpah. In verse 6, it says, then she rose, oh, and I'm sorry, this is Ruth chapter 1, Ruth chapter 1, verse 6. It says, then she arose, or verse 6, I'm sorry, then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had visited 
his people by giving them bread. Remember, these were dark times and it was a time of famine. So Naomi, after the death of her husband, after the 10 years and then the death of her sons, she heard that there was some restoration going on. And so, you know, we, I want to encourage you on tonight that we might be at the end of the rope right but not at the end of hope god is always doing something in our lives we might not be able to see it right in front of us but i'm gonna tell you when god begins a good thing he will finish it out naomi in her grieving state because she has lost three of her men in her life so in this air in this state that she is in she's grieving so ruth and orpah you know, are there with her, but she tells them, hey, y'all need to go back home. Even though she was in her state of grief, she was still considering the needs of these girls. So even in whatever she was feeling like, she wanted them to move on and move forward. But selfless and hopeful that they can continue with their lives despite what happened there with um, yes. Naomi. I thank God for people that put us first for us that put others first when you consider somebody else right i thank god for that because if it wasn't for someone that humbled themselves not thinking of themselves even going through situations and tragedies right because sometimes tragedies can make us all about ourselves or they can make us aware more aware and we can become more compassionate and sensitive to other people and what they're going through Two times Naomi told her daughters to leave. One of them said, peace. That was Orpah. <laughs> she said, okay, then you have to tell me no more. I'm rolling. And Ruth, good old Ruth, clung to Naomi and didn't let her push her away. Now in 2020, that is probably rare because of society and how quick response to taking care of our own needs, right? It's all about me movement, and that's what we do. We don't consider about what we can do for somebody else, but if you give me the okay, listen, bye, peace, I'm gone. I'm not even thinking twice. That is where we're at right now. But in a situation like this, especially where one person is telling them to go, would we even think twice on how we can help the other person, or would we be relieved? Would we think twice, or would we be relieved? Ruth said in verse 16 through 18, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, and I love this yes. section, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God will be my God. This is verse 17. Where you die, I will die and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also. If anything but death parts you and me. Verse 18 says, when she saw that she was determined, when Ruth, when Naomi saw that she was determined yes. to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. She was like, okay, I'm done arguing with you. Come on, let's roll. <laughs> God knows how to demonstrate his power and his presence, right? Through our lives, many afflictions. They are opportunities for us right. to have compassion, to accept new relationships, yes. not even just new, depths of the relationships that we have. That's demonstration of God's glory in our life. And I love the demonstration that God is showing to Ruth right now, because in 2 Corinthians, I want to take you to 2 Corinthians before I talk about the characteristics that we see in Ruth. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and I want to start in verse 7, because in this, oh my God, God, there's always a purpose, right? God wants us to walk and lead and live our lives from the inside out. He doesn't want us to live from the outside in. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Seven. It says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. 
We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned we are struck down but not destroyed we always carry around in our body the death of jesus so that the life of jesus may also be revealed in our body for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus sake. So it's not about us, That's but it's right. all about the plan that yeah. God has in yeah. store yeah. so that his life may be revealed in our mortal bodies. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Mm -hmm. Death is at work in us so that life may be at work in you. So here, it's saying that it's all about what's on the inside. It's not about on the outside, but it shows the demonstration of power and how we are built to go through and sustain the wiles and the attacks of the enemy through the many afflictions, through the storms in our life. We have been raised, created, designed for a purpose and only through Christ that we can move forward through whatever situation, whatever circumstance that we are in. Only through Christ that gives us the strength because in that paragraph of scripture, it says that we are crushed. We are crushed, it says. We are pressed on every side. But, or, I'm sorry, but not crushed, but perplexed. <laughs> it says, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. So even though we have the afflictions, right? The, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. That means he gives us the sustaining power, that anchor that just anchors us in, into his grace, into his mercy, into his compassion and his love, his, and gives us that endurance, gives us that that passion to have that steadfast love yes. only through Christ that, that we, we can do. have those things because it's through Christ that our life that we gain it's through Christ that we live it's through Christ that we can do the things that God has called us to do and have the power really to do them so here Ruth is demonstrating the love of God even right here she yes. said listen whoever God that you serve I'm gonna serve him whatever people that you have have, I'm going to adopt them. And that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to come obedient. He wants to come. He wants us to come surrendering everything that we have. Remember we were talking about commitment and the different things. One of those things was surrendering everything. Sometimes I think that we don't know where we're supposed to be because we really haven't surrendered everything to God. Think about that. The characteristics and attributes of Ruth in this story. It's not just about Boaz, but what got her to Boaz. Her character, her commitment, her decision, her her initiative to do something, right? To, to get up and move forward, to follow somebody that even at that time didn't want her to follow. She pushed back the feelings or I would say the emotions that Naomi was going through and she didn't even focus on that. She didn't even allow that to distract her because how many of y'all know that some of our friends, they can have an attitude one day or they can be happy another and we it, that might move us or it might not. It depends on how secure we are That's to true. be able to handle somebody else's attitude. But that showed confidence. That showed a depth of relationship that Ruth had with Naomi because she could look past what Naomi was feeling what she was going through expressing even and it was only for a moment though mm -hmm. it was only for a moment there was determination in Ruth these are characteristics that God wants us to have as we commit ourselves unto God he wants to he wants our life to show determination he wants us to be obedient he wants us to be teachable one of the main things that in that last part of Ruth in chapter 3 that we read in the beginning is that she was teaching.
teachable. Throughout her time being with Naomi, if Naomi told her, you know, how to do something when they moved back to Moab, I'm sorry, to Bethlehem, when they moved back to her people, Naomi started to teach and instruct Ruth. But can you imagine if Ruth was disobedient? Can you imagine if Ruth did not honor Naomi because of Naomi's re, um, response to her, you know, to the grief and to the deaths in her life? There had, that relationship was committed to each other. I'm telling you that right there because there was more there was more there than we might see in this word for her to submit herself under yes. Naomi, to her to follow her when everything else has died, when everything else has left. How many of y'all know that we might have gone through something and it might look like we don't have nothing else to hold on to? I'm encouraging you on tonight that you might be at the end of the rope, but you are not at the end of hope. Because if you put your hope in Christ, God knows how to turn that wheel of your life. He knows how to turn it into greatness. He knows how to turn your sorrows into dancing, your sadness and your mourning into joy. I know I'm messing up the scripture, but that's okay. The point is that God can turn every single thing in your life when we submit that situation unto him when we give him our children when we give him our spouse when we give him our job when we give him our life our ministry our leadership skills our insecurities our lack of response i mean everything <laughs> that can you that can be used by the enemy to hold us back. If yes. we can give that and submit it unto God, God yes. will take it and He will turn it. Yes, He will. He will do this. Yes. He will do it. Do Ruth showed commitment. Mm -hmm. She had a humble spirit, mm -hmm. able to be teachable through it all. She had accountability. Ruth had accountability not just Naomi but she ended up being accountable mm -hmm. from Boaz mm -hmm. there was accountability there Ruth was a symbol of abiding loyalty mm -hmm. and devotion mm -hmm. in verse 20 it says but she said to them do not call me now this in this verse this is where Ruth and Naomi travel back to Bethlehem and everybody sees them come back to Beth to back to her hometown and they notice that she comes in they notice her in so there right there shows that hey if somebody noticed you then that means you left some kind of mark so that right. means your character was shown mm -hmm. and that was part of your relationship with God mm -hmm. because if it wasn't for Naomi's relationship with God it wouldn't have really given substance to Ruth to want to follow her we have an attitude some days, but it doesn't mean that we've lost faith. We just have a little disturbance, just a little storm that we got. We need some help to see our way through. Yes. What doors open because of our character? In verse 20, but she said, but she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt with me bitterly. Ruth, meaning companion, and friend, vision of beauty. That is what Ruth means. Ruth means companion, friend, vision of beauty. That's exactly what Naomi needed. <laughs> and Ruth, though, needed Naomi. Naomi means delight. But in this scripture, it says, call me Mara. But that's not her name. Her name meant delight. But in that time, she said, call me Mara because there was bitterness because of the situation that she was going through. But be careful on allowing your issues to define who you are. Be careful. But in this story, though, they didn't define who she was. In this story, the opposite happened. God, God gave her a relationship that was beautiful and that was vision for the purpose that Naomi needed to walk in. 
She might have thought her life was over because her husband passed and her two children, her two sons passed. And she might have thought, you know, she was at the end of the rope and she might have thought that that was it. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes we just, when we have that person next to us, whether it be a pastor, a mentor, a spouse, when they can put our behavior to the side and take the time to be patient and look in the depth of the relationship, look at the heart, look past the annoyance on the outside, the chatter, the behavior that is coming from the heart. But if they can look past the outside and look in the inside, that person just might be the hand that we need to come up out of our mess, to come up out of ourself. How many of y'all know that sometimes when we isolate ourselves and we get in ourselves, you know, sometimes it might take a little bit to come back. But if we have a relationship or we have somebody that's accountable to, if we have somebody that we're submitted to and that we trust, right, with our heart and we trust our lives in their hands, that they have permission to come in and take us out of where we're going. Because sometimes we might think that we're in a good place, but that place will blind us. From seeing the truth and to, and to having clear vision to where, hey, that's not it. God has so much more for you. That your life is not over. There's so much more. There's so much purpose. There's so much. There's so much. There's so much. If it wasn't for those people in our life who were unselfish, and took the time to instruct. I can think of many people that were in my life that took the time to instruct me as a young age, to care for me. If, if it wasn't for the unselfish people in our lives to instruct the younger people, right? And for the younger people to care for the older people and for the rich people to care for the poor people. If it wasn't for these people, we don't even, our life would not even be the same. It's amazing how tragedy will come and make us change. It is amazing how tragedy will get our attention. So the people that are in front of us right now, do not take it for granted. The people that are in your life, they might be the very people that God is going to use to instruct you, to help you, to direct you, to help you get out of a season that you might be lost in, you might need clarity. Hey, do not take, do not take for granted the people and the seasons of life that you are in, even right now. We have to reposition ourselves for what has to come. Our posture is very important. And we have to make the necessary changes to receive the victory and the destiny and the purpose and the calling to receive the understanding of where God is taking us. Sometimes it may, takes a posture change, right? To receive the blessings of what is right in front of you. The things that are right in front of you sometimes because we're in ourselves, and because we're not humble and because we're not teachable and we're not accountable and we don't submit ourselves and we always want to be in control full of pride full of arrogance it has to be my way or no way at all because of that we take for granted and we will not see the value of relationships that are in our life we will dismiss the very people that God has placed in our life to get us out of the ruts that we put ourselves in. Right. Ruth was there for Naomi in that time before the tragedy happened. God placed Ruth in her life right. on purpose for a purpose. And we know what happened after. After she got with Boaz, we know what came from the lineage. She was the great grandmother of David. <laughs> so there was there, there's so much to this story that you can look at. But the blessing of it is, is that in Psalms 34 and 19, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Naomi came alive and life 
and purpose was found in her relationship with Ruth. She came alive. Some of us might feel that we're dead right now. Some of us might feel that we just need some more strength or we need some more. Hey, do not take it for granted. The people in our life that might cause us to come to life, that might give us clarity and vision to see where God wants us to be and wants us to where to go. And Ruth chapter 2 verse 2 it says so Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I may find favor and she said to her go my daughter Ruth showed she was obedient she was submitted and respectful to Naomi she didn't take for granted the relationship that she had. She even asked permission, can I go? And the purpose, it wasn't for just her to eat, but it was for both of them to eat. Mm -hmm. She was also in a foreign land, so her protection was through clear communication. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know that our communication needs improvement? Yeah. <laughs> Specific. Specific. <laughs> Our communication needs improvement. Mm -hmm. I believe God is wanting to show us on tonight mm -hmm. that until we surrender it all to God and we submit mm -hmm. our ways under God and allow God to be the head over our life, that we will not even gain the knowledge of Him to even grasp the depth of his love, mm -hmm. the distance of our purpose, mm -hmm. the height of his compassion. In 2 Peter 1.3, I have two scriptures I'm going to end with. One is 2 Peter 1.3. It says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness that means we have no excuse to have what god has given we have everything that we need the world does not have it for us but in this word it says his divine power has given us everything that pertains to life. If we need to know it, it's through Christ. If we need to have it, it's through Christ. If we need to know how to be godly, it's through Christ. We cannot get the knowledge of God through the knowledge of the world. The knowledge of the world we will get through Christ. God will give us the knowledge to be able to deal with the world. But we first have to get the knowledge of Christ through his power, his resurrection power in our life. Then we can submit our ways, submit our tongue, submit our eyes, submit our ears, submit our hearts, submit our relationships to him. Through Christ, we can do all things. That's who strengthens us. We can't do anything without him. And my last scripture that I want to end on tonight is Hebrews chapter 13, 17. It says, obey those who rule over you. It doesn't matter if it's your boss on your job. If you say you are a believer, if you are submitting to God, then you should automatically submit to your boss. If you can't submit to boss, then there's something out of alignment with your relationship with God. If you can't submit to your spouse, if you can't submit to the authorities in the government of this world, That's come on, right. we got to humble ourselves. Right. It's too much talking and yakking and, 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 and talking bad against people, but we need to humble ourselves because in humility, God said in Psalms, I think it was chapter 25, if you read in there, in, in Psalms chapter 25, he talks about in humility, he gives us direction. Mm -hmm. 
When we humble ourselves, God will give us direction. He will give us wisdom. He will make, he will humble the proud and he will exalt the humble. Here it says in this scripture, Hebrews 13, 17, let me finish it. And be submissive. So it says, obey those who rule over you and be submissive. Obey and be submissive. Obey and be submissive. For they watch out for your souls. You might not like the response that you get sometimes, but depending on what you're doing in your life, you might need a hard a hard response. You might need a soft response, but if they're directing you in love and instructing you in love, what they have for you is to build you up, not to tear you down. As those who must give account, it says, for they will watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. Listen, pastors have a huge responsibility to watch over the flock, to shepherd the flock, to lead and to guide them. We do not take it for granted, but don't get it twisted. We are submitted under God first. It says, let them do so with joy and not with grief. Let the pastors, <laughs> let the pastors watch over you. <laughs> Find your place at the feet of the king's man, redeemer. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. If you are giving people flack, you are giving them grief. And we are to serve as leaders in this scripture, Hebrews 13, 17. We are to lead with joy, not with grief. That means stop bringing your stuff that we ha as leaders have given you instruction, given you wisdom, given you understanding to provide opportunities of change, right? So that way we can lead with joy. So we, so that way it profits you. At the end of the day, God puts people in your life that you may grow that you may be successful and that you may walk into the calling, the purpose and the destiny and the blessings that God has for you. Well, that is it for tonight. Thank you for joining me as we talk about commitment, as we reach into the scriptures and we talk about the life of Ruth. And after I get off of Facebook, I'm going to open up the line to our go-to meeting friends. So those on Facebook, hey, listen, we post the go-to meeting information on Facebook and on YouTube and, you know, in our website. Anytime that you would like to give feedback, channel, hey, come into our channel of go-to meeting and we would love to hear from you. But until Sunday and next Wednesday, we will see you. Thank you for coming. Come make sure you don't forget to join us on Sunday morning if you don't have a church and on next Wednesday for the word of God. Be blessed. We love you and have a good night.